Hi guys, welcome to the latest episode of this unbelievable life. I'm so glad you're here to join me today. Um, today we're going to have Alan Weber, who is a seasoned loan originator serving the Evansville, Indiana area and surrounding real estate market. He has spent the bulk of his career helping home buyers get the mortgage needed to fit their goals and their financial ability. Alan started out in his teens working in the family construction business before transferring into home flipping. You know, and we've talked about this on previous episodes, you know, Bob and I flip as well. Uh, that led to a few years as a, a high producing realtor before he started his current occupation of 20 plus years as a mortgage loan originator. In 2008, when most of the area mortgage companies were going out of business, Alan founded and opened his own mortgage branch. Over the years, he has merged with and signed up with larger and larger mortgage corporations to allow better pricing and an awesome level of service. Despite the constant ups and downs in the market and ever-changing rules and regulations, though, Alan works hard to be mindful of how his customers are struggling to understand and how to navigate the mortgage process. This is ever more important today as people are literally drowning in information and advice from the internet and advertisements. So um, Alan, again, is with um, Bank of England Mortgage, which is located on Morgan Avenue in Evansville. And today we have asked him to talk about non-qualified mortgage products and as an alternative uh, for borrowers that can't borrowers that can't satisfy the income documentation required for a conventional Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac mortgage. So Alan, take it away, please. Thanks for that, Nikki. I appreciate that. That was a nice uh, introduction. Um, so as she talked about the non-qualified, or we call them non-QM mortgages, um, these are a, a, a great alternative for folks who are looking for financing but cannot fall under what we call the vanilla uh, mortgage products, your conventional uh, Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac products that are out there, also your FHA and VA, USDA products. Those all have very strict guidelines on um, exactly how you will uh, calculate your income uh, to qualify for that mortgage. Uh, so a lot of times the folks who are going to follow uh, fall into this category, they're going to be like your self-employed borrowers or a 1099 borrower. And uh, we can all appreciate trying to minimize your tax burden every year. So these folks will write off everything that they can uh, because they don't want to pay all these taxes. And that makes sense. Uh, we certainly uh, all pay plenty of taxes, that's for sure. Um, unfortunately, what you report on your income taxes is what you use for your qualifying income when getting a mortgage. So you might have $150,000 in sales, but uh, if you write off $150,000 worth of uh, expenses, uh, you have zero income. So an, a, uh, a non-qualified borrower, uh, or a, a uh, I'm sorry, a borrower does not qualify for one of these mortgage products would fall into, would fall for the, uh, or would uh, want to get the, uh, the non-QM or non-qualified mortgage. Uh, one of the more popular programs that you hear people talk about for the non-QM is what's referred to as the bank statement loan, uh, which means instead of looking at your profit and loss in the last two years, tax returns and such as that, we're going to only look at the business deposits or income deposits in your checking and savings account. So uh, we'll look at uh, 12 months personal or 12 months business, or maybe a combination if it started out at personal and then you switched over to a business account, but uh, you know, 12 to 24 months, depending on what program you want to go with. And we can look at that and if we can see, you know, okay, here's these deposits from, you know, Venmo or from uh, your, wherever you're getting your income from uh, or Square uh, purchases, those types of things there. We can look at those deposits and add all of those up for the last 12 months and use that as a baseline for what their income is. Um, and so regardless of what you write off, you know, we'll have a preset, depending on what type of industry it is, uh, a preset expense ratio that we'll deduct it out. And then that's, that's how we'll determine what it is. You know, obviously someone who uh, sells insurance would not have the same expenses as someone who does an excavating business or something like that. Um, so to qualify for this, um, you must have at least two years self-employed or 1099 income. So you can't just suddenly be in business. You have to have a little bit of time in it. Um, we can document that with a business lease, a letter from a CPA, company website showing the time you've been in business, just simple things like that. Um, it is going to have a minimum of 30, uh, 10 to 30 percent down, um, depending on what your credit score is. And, and this is for people who have strong qualifying credit. Uh, so it's this isn't for someone who's fresh out of a bankruptcy or anything like that, but uh, it 
uh, you can do that. And then this is for primary residence only. Um, so no investment properties with this particular product. Um, and um, you must be at least 25% greater than the company owner. Uh, and if you're a first time home buyer, you must have at least 12 months documentable rent pay history. Um, so no people living at home with mom and dad, unfortunately, you'd have to have at least some rental history. Uh, and these are for loan amounts that go from as low as 100,000 all the way up to 2 million, which is something that also you can't do uh, with a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac loan. You cannot go up to a $2 million loan amount. Uh, not that I've done a lot of those, but uh, they're out there. So the bank statement loan, you know, it's it's got some pretty loose guidelines to it, and it's a great way for someone who doesn't um, report a lot of income on their tax returns and still want to qualify for a mortgage um, and take advantage of that. Now, another non-QM product that I'd like to talk about, and this one's really neat, uh, it's called a debt service mortgage. And this is strictly for investment homes, one to four unit dwellings. Um, so... In any mortgage, if you're going to get it on an investment property that's a qualified mortgage, uh, you have to show all your tax returns, bank statements, uh, pay stubs, all of those things there, show all the leases and all of those things there to qualify for this one to four unit uh, home that you're going to use for rental income. This particular product will not look at any of your W-2s or 1099s, profit and loss, it won't look at any of those documents at all, but rather what we're going to do is we're going to look at the rental income for that unit versus the principal interest taxes and insurance payment of that house. So as long as, and there's a small factor we put in there, it's not much. Uh, at most, it's like 1.25%. So for instance, if you had $1,000 in uh, total monthly payment on that, on that dwelling, and we gross that up to 100 uh, to 25 percent, so it'd be 1,250 dollars. As long as the rental income is greater than that 1,250 dollars, you qualify. We're not going to look at any of your other income. So that's really a neat product, uh, and it makes it easy to qualify because a lot of times, you know, you got your house payment, you got your car payment, your student loans, and all those other things. But then now you want to buy an investment property. And with all of those, it stops you from qualifying. As long as this property will cash flow, you're going to be in good shape. Now, that could be proven by either current or past leases on that property, or we could look at a, uh, a rent analysis report completed by an appraiser who would say, okay, this house, based on the information that's available, the appraiser can state how much that rent will be. And that now becomes your qualifying income. And that's all we look at. No W-2s, no profit and loss, none of that stuff. Um, this is going to be, again, for 10% to 30% down, depending on credit score. Um, again, it's for a strong credit qualifying borrower. Um, you know, they need at least a 660 score on this program. This is for non-owner occupied. So this is not for something where if you just want to buy a multi-plant uh, unit dwelling and you wanted to live in one of the units, unfortunately, this program wouldn't work for that. But if you're truly wanting to be an investor, this is a great product for that. Um, you must currently own a home. You can't be a first time home buyer and buy an investment property with this program. Um, and you can't have any 30 day late payments on your uh, housing expenses for the last 12 months. So you have to be, you know, you have to be strong on those levels there, but it is a nice way of cash flow is an issue, an issue. Um, <clears throat> um, and then this one here will go all the way down as low as a hundred thousand dollars on the loan amount up to one and a half million. But this is a program that if you came in and uh, no matter how much money the, the the home makes, you know, sometimes on a conventional mortgage, you still can't get it to qualify. This will allow you to do that. So um, these are just a few of our non-qualified programs. We have several others for folks who don't have Social Security numbers. Maybe they're from, from another country. Uh, there's a lot of other things like that in the non-QM world that can really help uh, folks get a, um, a mortgage where they wouldn't normally qualify. Um, so... Uh, Nikki, if, uh, if anyone has any questions or concerns, have them call me uh, at um, our, my phone number. rings at my desk and cell phone 24-7 at 812-962-4222 and it's extension 101. Again, that rings literally at my desk and cell phone 24-7. And, uh, or they can stop by our office. Uh, we're on Morgan Avenue. We're getting ready to move to Virginia. We're going to be there in about uh, three months because we're getting so crowded in this office. And then, uh, of course, they can email me. Um, just find me on Facebook, Alan Weber, uh, and you can find my Bank of England page. So uh, 
but uh, I appreciate the opportunity on this. Thank you. I think that is all so awesome, especially coming from my husband and I are both small business owners. I just think that's a phenomenal product uh, for people like that. And I know I promised, you know, no questions, but I actually do have one question. And that is, um, I know a lot of people sometimes buy homes for like their parents or their siblings. Would that debt service mortgage work for something like that? If you already had somebody lined up to rent, like, so if you already have the renter in mind and, and if it's a, even if it's a family member, do, is that qualify for that? Yes, it could still qualify that if they were going to rent it uh, because in essence, the rental um, doesn't really necessarily, it doesn't matter if it's your brother or your mother that's renting it. Um, and if it's not currently rented, let's just say it's just a one unit house, you know, again, we can go back and get the rent analysis report from the appraiser and that will help put them in that. Very cool. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I can't wait to go down the rabbit hole of a few more of these products very soon. So we, we, Alan and I do have more upcoming podcasts coming up, so we can't wait to share. In the meantime, thank you all for listening. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Alan directly or to message them to me. Um, you know, we, we like to take these questions and fine tune them into additional podcast episodes. So any questions, just let either of us know. And Alan, I'm so grateful that you came on the show today. And um, thanks for being a part of my unbelievable life. And um, everybody, thank you again for listening.